Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this Rick Game to the video, let's talk about AMD Ryzen again, shall we? Now, we're probably going to be seeing a lot more of this processor at CES 2017, but until then, I have another tidbit concerning the clock speeds of the processor, which, to be honest, is one of the last main questions we have, specifically regarding overclocking. That and the price of the CPU were a little conspicuous by their absence. It's obvious AMD is still trying to finalize this stuff. One thing Lisa Su did tell us at the New Horizon event is that the processors are going to run at at least 3.4 gigahertz, but from her wording, it does sound an awful lot like some CPUs are going to run higher, but they basically are not going to announce that until they are closer to release, which I suppose is just their way of saying, well, we're still tweaking to see the best we can get out of it, which is fair enough. Now, Yelaz um, emailed me an interesting tip, uh, and this was spotted on a website by the name of Guru3D. A few days ago, I put out a video concerning some leaked benchmarks of Ryzen, and this was thanks to a French publication by the name of Canard PC. Now, what they'd done is basically test engineering sample, I want to stress that one more time, engineering sample Ryzen CPUs against a variety of different um, other processors, including the 6900K and some uh, uh, Cable Lake CPUs and other bits and pieces. And essentially, they were trying to give you an understanding of how the processor may or may not function. At the end of the day, once again, it is only engineering samples, so final clock speeds may not be 100% accurate. But... There is a very interesting tidbit on the page. Essentially, there's a binary string, and if you do a conversion uh, of that binary string, it will pop up with a very, very, very simple uh, bit of text. It says Zen OC at air equal 5G. Now, this is a pretty simple <laughs> piece of information. It tells us that the processor, assuming it's accurate, is running at 5 gigahertz, or capable of running at 5 gigahertz. Now, I would like to point out this is, well, first of all, on engineering sample, so it's not necessarily indicative of final retail sample. Second thing I would like to point out is that, well, it's assuming that they weren't just putting this in as like an Easter egg, which doesn't necessarily mean anything. It may do, it may not do. So that's down to you to kind of figure that out. That If you want to take stock of that, that's up to you. And the last thing, and this is perhaps the most important, is what test criteria were they using? For example, they you could just do a boot into Windows at 5 gigahertz. It's running at 5 gigahertz, everyone. But as soon as you run a benchmark, for example, Blender, it just dies. Another possibility is they, were is they were putting a nuclear reactor's worth of energy into the processor to make it stable. Now, a few weeks ago, um, actually just after the New Horizon event, if memory serves, there was a couple of leaks which popped up from a couple of different websites, and they reported sources had told them um, that the processor, Ryzen, just to clarify, the 8-core 16-thread model, actually had more voltage running through it than the final retail sample. So in other words, the ES sample they were showing, engineering sample they were showing, had more voltage running through it for stability. So that tells me that AMD at the time weren't 100% confident. So obviously, there are going to be a few bits and pieces which may be changing for the retail. The last one is how many cores were under load and were only a couple of cores under load. For example, how does the overclocking actually work on Ryzen? AMD have made a lot of fuss regarding the fact that it's got exact precision. You can go in with certain models of the motherboard, the X370s, for example, and fine-tune things down to the minutest detail. But... Whether you can overclock, for example, just a single core under load, or whether everything runs at uh, the same speed regardless, we don't know this stuff. And therefore, there are a hell of a lot of questions that this actually raises, rather than actually answers. Now, 5 gigahertz, I would not be surprised if it's accurate. The only reason I'm going to give them the slight benefit of the doubt is that, well, they're probably using very... Basically, the best silicon they could if they were showing it to the members of the press. Now, 5 gigahertz is pretty impressive, but when you consider KB Lake, for example, is reaching 5 gigahertz minimum 
uh, for a lot of overclocks as well as Skylake. Like it's not it's not unheard of to see five gigahertz. Now, admittedly, that may not be on air, but also watt air cooler because that's another thing they don't actually clarify. Like air is very ambiguous. It's like me saying to you, well. I'm in a car which has got an engine. It doesn't tell you the engine. The only thing is, it, it tells you it's not a mode of transport, which is like a jet fighter. It, it, you know, there's a lot of different types of engine. There's a lot of different types of cooler. For example, if this was on a stock cooler, that's very impressive. But if it's on a more robust model, let's just say, then it's somewhat less impressive. It's a little, once again, ambiguous. But... At the end of the day, if Zen does overclock to a pretty decent speed, um, let's assume that this is inaccurate or the best case scenario. So let's assume that they were very, very, very much cherry picking samples when they went to the event, which I think is most likely, to be honest, because once again, that they wanted to be certain it would be as stable as a rock. Because let's say you're a company and you're showing off a product, you don't want the wheels to be falling off in the middle of a demonstration, especially to members of the press. So that's all, you know, that's all understandable. So let's assume that this is cherry picked samples and then overclocks to, let's say, 4.5 gigahertz. Let's give them uh, 4.5. That's still pretty damn good. To be honest, if it even runs overclocked at about the same clocks, as a 67 or a 7700K, those both those processors are pretty much interchangeable anyway, other than clock speed. It's a very good win for AMD, to be totally blunt with you. And it's going to be very difficult for me to recommend another processor over Ryzen, aside from price. And that is the final question. Because there are a lot of rumours that there are going to be two variants of the 8-core model. Now, I won't go too in-depth into this because, quite frankly, there have been a couple of different versions of the story. But the too-long-didn't-read of this is that AMD will be releasing a, a SR7 that's supposedly going to be the uh, Summit Ridge 7, which is supposedly going to be the 8-core 16-thread model. And supposedly, there's going to be one variant which has lower clocks um, out the gate and also is capable of less uh, overclocking. So it's not, you know, that, let's just say it runs at 3.4 gigahertz base. I don't know the final clocks, but let's just assume it's 3.4. And on average, it might clock to, let's say, 4.1 or even 4. Whereas on the other hand, you might have a higher clocked model, which is naturally going to be more expensive the numbers I'm hearing are about 350 for the basic SR7 and the the premium super duper deluxe version, for lack of a better word of putting, better way of putting it, is going to cost around the 500 US dollar mark. But it's going to have higher clock speeds out the gate. I don't know what clocks those are going to be. For the sake of this video, I'll say 3.8 gigahertz. But that's with no insider knowledge. I'm pulling that number out of my ass. I want to be clear. And let's say, on average, you might get 4.5 gigahertz out overclock, or 4.6. Once again, pulling numbers out of my ass. I have to keep saying that because I don't want people to misquote me or say, you know, Paul of Red Gaming Text has inside it. I have to be very clear. So, if 4 gigahertz is easy for Ryzen to break, AMD, to be honest, have struck pretty, pretty well much gold with the processor. Naturally, however, there are the pricing issues, stability issues, how many processors do clock to that speed, what's the platform going to be like as a whole, how many actual benchmarks does the processor actually win against Intel as a whole. And also, the big thing, let's say you've got a 6700K or a 6600K, let's say you've got a 6700K for sake of this video, well, do you really need to upgrade your processor if you're only gaming? I mean, it's nice if you've got the spare cash. I'm not going to dispute that. But let's say you're someone who only has a finite amount of funds, which most people do. And then you see this new Tasty Vega pro uh, graphics processor coming out in a few months. And then, undoubtedly, you're going to see the GTX 1080 or something else come out. And you're stuck there with like an R9 290 or a... I know, a GTX 780 or something like that. I don't know. I'm just pulling things out of my ass once again. It's like, would you, would you jump on Ryzen or would you rather think to yourself, gee, I'd much rather go with a GTX 1080 or two of them in SLI? Um, it's, 
kind of like, yeah, uh, obviously for folks who are just doing gaming, the CPU might not be the final equation. But for folks with older processors, let, let's say you've got an FX8300, for example, 8350, 8370, or you have a, I don't know, a 2600K or anything along those lines, Ryzen may well be the processor for you. But once again, do wait. Don't just pre-order this stuff. Wait until there are reviews coming in. Wait until we see a good number of benchmark samples. So it's not just, uh, I don't know, Blender and uh, Handbrake. We want a good number of benchmarks so we can actually say what scenarios the processor does well in, what scenarios the processor does poorly in, and then you, as the consumer, can make an educated decision as to what you should put your money in, which is, to be honest, the best way. Anywho, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. Um, I am putting together a video at the moment. I'm writing the script, which is actually an explanation, funnily enough, on how processors work. So it ties in rather well. I don't know why I sound so joyous today. I think it's mostly because I managed to get a bit of sleep last night, which is always a nice thing, isn't it? Anywho, I'm going to let you all go. Normal thing, like, share, subscribe, and, you know, let me know in the comments what you'd like the process to be able to run at. Um, on Air or an AIO, I'm going to, you know, I, I'm going to assume there's probably not going to be super hardcore overclockers in the comments, but there might be. So if there are, you know, feel free to let me know what you want it running on liquid nitrogen, and uh, I'll leave you all to it. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.